Hey you all, Farmer Jesse here. I get a lot of questions about clay and I get a lot of questions about drainage and I don't have a lot of first-hand experience with it or I didn't until now. So in our new farm, we have a whole plot, one section of the entire garden where we put all of our first plant starts, which was brilliant, that is not draining very well. So today I'm gonna talk about drainage. I'm gonna talk about what it does to soil and plants, uh, how I missed it in the new property, how I didn't see it coming, and what we're doing about it. So let's do it. First things first, if you're not subscribed to this channel, please hit the subscribe button. And if you are subscribed, you already did that and you're awesome. Here's the thing. Uh, plants have this magical ability. It's not magic, but it feels kind of like magic of converting carbon dioxide, water, and sunlight into glucose, which is the basically the building blocks of all life. Uh, that feeds the soil life, it gathers nutrients for the plants, it creates leaves for the plants. Um, it's an important, incredibly important process. It cools our planet, it gives us oxygen to breathe. We need and love photosynthesis. And when plants can't photosynthesize well, they don't grow well, uh, often they yellow, they'll die, they're more disease prone. Um, and one of the main abiotic stresses, which is like abiotic just meaning non-biological stresses, uh, that plants can go through that can decrease photosynthetic activity, that can decrease the plant's ability to photosynthesize, is drainage, poor drainage specifically. What I mean is that when plants can't breathe, when the roots are logged in water, waterlogged, a lot of things happen the stoma close and the stoma are located under the underside of the leaves these are tiny holes that bring in carbon dioxide and release water that closes uh chlorophyll production goes down so that's why you see the yellowing because chlorophyll absorbs sunlight it's a green pigment if it starts to yellow it means the plant's not absorbing as many photons which means that it's not photosynthesizing as well this creates an environment of uh, for a great environment for anaerobes we need anaerobes in the soil to some extent but we don't want a proliferation of an anaerobes uh, that's bad for plant roots on many levels so over time the plant will you know cease photosynthesis it will stop photosynthesizing you know and eventually won't produce or it won't produce as well or it may just die um which is none of those are good things if you're trying to you know run a profitable vegetable farm so farmers like to avoid poor drainage or poorly drained soils um and i did that for so i thought so here's how i missed it we saw this farm in september or august so we saw it late in the season it was kind of dry so we didn't you know I, I don't take that for granted i checked the compaction the compaction seemed it was there this was like a grazed uh, by alpacas and horses for several years. So there was definitely some compaction around. Um, generally the grass is good. There wasn't a ton of compaction. There were some sort of wet areas, but they looked nice and healthy. Um, so I wasn't too concerned with drainage from the outset. Uh, I also looked at the web soil survey that the NRCS does. Um, and I looked at the map. I looked at the soil type. Soil type was good. Uh, lots of silty loam. Uh, and it was well drained. We're also farming on a bit of a hillside. Hillsides tend to drain better than flat areas. So that's another reason we didn't really see it coming. Here's what I didn't know. That probably sometime in the past, there was a massive drainage tile put into this farm, maybe more than one, that drains right into this first plot in my garden. Um, when I started to notice the plants slowing down, like this lettuce was planted four weeks before this lettuce. When I started to see that and started to see some of the discoloration and started to see the low performance in the plants, uh, I started to wonder, had I goofed? And I want to be clear, I broad forked before I put the compost down. I did all of my general prep for a mildly compacted soil. I, I literally mentioned compaction 80 times in my book, The Living Soil Handbook. Like it's something I focus a lot on. So. I wasn't prepared to have a drainage tile draining right into the soil. Those are the kind of things that you don't know until you're actually on the farm what's happening. So we diverted some of that drainage tile, at least what we could find. That will help over time. But here's, I want to get into what else we're doing because I don't want to add a bunch of drainage tile. If I absolutely have to, I will, but I just don't love the idea of burying plastic. I'd like to do it, um, I'd like to do it a little bit more passively at first and see how far I can get with that. So what do you do? What are we doing? Um, we're doing a number of things. First thing is we're raising all of these beds higher, putting, you know, the pathways on top of the beds and then we're covering that with a little bit more compost. Um, so it's a little bit of an expensive venture, but we're trying to get the beds raised up. The other thing that we're doing is we're gonna cover crop these beds really heavily over the winter uh, to make sure that we are getting as much soil organic matter in the soil as possible because that will help with the drainage overall. Now, we are also going to be broad forking every season. And the reason that we're gonna bring the broad fork into it um, is to help open up that compaction a little bit. You've gotta get oxygen down there. And 
you do that while you're right before or during growing crops, like I like to broad fork when a uh, cover crop is kind of young to sort of open it up and let those plant roots get even deeper start building that soil organic matter as deep as possible to help with the drainage another thing that we've noticed that we're going to be exploring a little bit more is that the wood chips have not helped at all the wood chips have made it worse um, so we have wood chip pathways we have pathways that we're managing just with cultivation and then we have pathways that are living pathways all in the same area and the pathways that have done the best are the ones with the living pathways. So the living pathways have actually helped quite a lot with our drainage, anecdotally, and the germination was better on those crops. The Just their performance in general has been generally better. Uh, and I suspect that's partly because the living pathways are releasing more of that moisture and also uh, adding you know, soil organic matter and those sorts of things. That's helpful. That's very helpful, I think, to the beds. And to be clear here, this is not an indictment of wood chips. I love wood chips. I think wood chips work great in the paths. In this situation, I think that I have to get the drainage under control before utilizing wood chips because they're going to trap a lot more moisture than they release. Um, but over time, they will add soil organic matter and those sorts of things. So there will be, there would be some benefit in the future, but I think getting that drainage under control first is essential. Another thing that we're doing, if you watch that video on the essential garden amendment um, that I posted a few weeks ago, I'll put the link right there. The uh, We're also doing that. We're also putting in crops and we're inoculating the soil quite, quite a lot with uh, good beneficial microbes, so with the compost tea extract. So, and then we're also spraying the uh, plants as much as we can with uh, nutrient applications to, because when you have poor drainage, your plants don't have access to the nutrients they need, but they can get some of that, at least the macro, the micronutrients uh, through uh, foliar sprays. So we're also doing that. Kind of in a recap here, we're raising our, we're raising our beds. We're trying to build soil organic matter. We're broad forking to open them up a little bit as we go. Uh, hopefully that will make itself obsolete. We may not need to use the broad fork for many years. That's kind of the genius of that tool. It, if you use it right, you no longer need it eventually. Um, so, and then we're just gonna constantly crop these as much as possible, um, just to make sure that there's something always growing. And then, like I said, we may be increasing our, getting rid of the wood chip pathways in this plot uh, and increasing our living pathways. Um, we're doing more of that. I'm not a huge advocate for them yet. I don't know. I've been doing living pathways for a couple years in different spots. This year, I'm trying it on a much larger scale and we will definitely talk about that in a later video, I promise. And the other thing I've noticed, and I think this is kind of an important point, uh, is that in the poorly drained soils, that silty loam that I saw on the NRCS map doesn't exist. It's basically clay. And that's partly because the soil organic matter, you know, these the plants that were there before were not thriving. They were not building soil organic matter. Uh, the compaction was pretty heavy, I assume, from the animals. Um, so that kind of reduced the amount of sandy loam on top of our clay. So basically, we're kind of like down to the, uh, you know, second layer of the soil, uh, which is heavily clay. But further back, the soil is a little better. It's a little bit more topsoil. Uh, the clay is a little bit deeper. But here in this area where there's heavy, heavy water logging, it is really rough soil. So stay tuned. I'll keep you all updated on that. Otherwise, like this video if you like this video. Make sure to check out my book, The Living Soil Handbook. Uh, it is on pre-order now at notillgrowers.com. I appreciate what you can buy that because I have the money from watching these videos and from buying the book goes into making more content like this. So if you like this content, like it, but also, you know, go buy a book or become a Patreon member at patreon.com slash no-till growers. All right, I'm done pitching. I gotta get to work. Thanks for watching. We'll see you later. Bye. And wish me luck. <laughs>